This is African American History is American History. Welcome. I'm your host, Harlan Kearsley. This program's goal is to foster understanding, promote discussion, and expand knowledge through stories of historical events, bios of unsung heroes, as well as timely and relevant news stories which, hopefully, will paint a vivid picture of the effects of segregation, discrimination, and bigotry on the lives of both blacks and whites. Comparisons will be made between the many racially fractured periods of American history and what's going on right now. Today, Destination Freedom tells the story of James Weldon Johnson, poet, educator, and lobbyist, in a chapter entitled, Poet in Pine Mill. By 1940, two of every three households in America had a radio, and twice as many people owned radios as owned telephones. At the start of America's involvement in World War II, the federal government realized that it needed every citizen involved to help win the war. And by every, that included black people, who were at the time depicted on radio and in movies as nothing more than lazy, clownish, comic relief. So, a series of groundbreaking radio programs were created. They were designed to promote civil rights, African American history and culture, mend deep racial divisions throughout the country, and as America prepared for war. Slip in a little World War II patriotic propaganda at the same time. Let's take a look at some of these early radio programs. Freedom's people. My country. Freedom, there's a word. This is the story of a great gift. The story of a rich land further enriched by a bounty of beauty. This is the story of the warm and human melodies the Negro found in his heart and gave to America. From 1941 to 1942, NBC Radio aired Freedom's People, This nine-part series explored black history and achievements in areas like music, science, industry, and sports. It was the first real program in mass media devoted exclusively to African American culture and history. Presented as a deeply patriotic radio show, Freedom's People celebrated democracy and freedom. Made by and for African Americans, This show featured some of the greatest leaders in 1940s black culture, including Paul Robeson, Count Basie, Cab Calloway, civil rights leader A. Philip Randolph, composer Noble Sissel, and leading blues musician W.C. Handy. Freedom's People even included an appearance by inventor and scientist George Washington Carver. At the start of the Armed Forces Radio Service, a show called Jubilee began. For you cats and kittens, chicks and chickens, we're here to blitz the static, it's Jubilee! Like the man with a big fat chopper told you a few early brights ago, tonight is Jubilee's first anniversary. And so we sunk the ladle way, way down in the potent punch bowl and come up with some of the most juicy tidbits of the year. And here to sample his digits over the Websters and introduce the righteous performers as they fall off their clouds and enter this cosmo is your master of ceremonies, easy to get, and you can have him, Ernie Whitman. <laughs> Thank you. Men, seeing how this is a birthday party for the gut bucket boogie woogie and the blues, I want you to know I'm wearing a camel behind both ears. The one on my left ear stands for the first 52 weeks of the barrel house. 
and the other one to knows 52 more weeks of the solidest job we can sink our tusk into. And here to begin the beginning at the front end of the starting point is the granddaddy of them all, Duke Ellington. Proceed, Duke! <laughs> Jubilee was directed at black troops, but since the content of the program was highly popular jazz music, it would eventually be enjoyed by servicemen of all races. The program stated that it was for the fighting men of the United Nations. American troops were getting to know the people and the lands where they were serving. Jubilee saw itself as a chance for these people to get to know America. This is African American History is American History. With the sweep and fury of the resurrection... The new world are coming. Today and every Sunday at this hour, WMCA, in cooperation with the Citywide Citizens Committee on Harlem, brings you a series of vivid programs dramatizing the inner meaning of Negro life. Based on the prize winning bestseller, New World are coming by Roy Otley. Today, the story of Negro humor, as seen through the eyes of Langston Hughes, well-known poet and novelist. Starring Canada Lee as Langston Hughes, Gordon Heath as narrator, and Josh White and his guitar. New World of Coming was the brainchild of nationally known black journalist Roy Otley. His 1943 book entitled New World of Coming, Inside Black America, won the Peabody Award and the Life in America Award. In 1944, Otley traveled to Europe and became one of the first African-American war correspondents for a major newspaper. New World of Coming was narrated by African-American actor Canada Lee, and showcased the work of other leading black artists. Duke Ellington even wrote the theme song. New World of Common featured accounts of African-American social life in 1940s Harlem and serving in the military during World War II. For two seasons, the show aired political and racial concerns through true-life accounts of African-American experiences, such as U.S. soldiers on leave denied at restaurants and movie theaters, problems of discrimination in the workplace and banks, unequal pay and opportunities, and other civil rights issues. <laughs> Once I was driving south from New York to Washington. Uh, just below the Capitol, those of us in the car became thirsty, and of course someone suggested stopping at a roadside refreshment hut we saw ahead. We knew we couldn't eat or drink inside since there is a legal Jim Crow in Virginia. But uh, it was my intention to purchase a few bottles of soda and bring them out to my friend. I stopped the car, got out, and walked toward the front door of the hut. It was a screen door with a brass handle on it. I knocked, and I saw a poorly dressed old southerner. The proprietor holding the door on the inside. He shouted through the screen. You can't come in here. Well, uh, I want to buy a bottle of soda. Have you got any Pepsi-Cola? What do you want? Uh, some sodas. Uh, you can't get them through the front here. Go around to the side of the house. Uh, but there's no door there. You get them through a hole. A hole? Where? Walk around the side. We'll serve you there. We got a hole there cut out for Negroes. The man continued frantically to hold the door as though I were a dangerous savage intent on murder. I went around the side of the little frame building and 
there, sure enough, was a square hole cut in the wall through which colored people were served. I didn't buy, of course, but I had to laugh. Who could help it? Almost within the shadow of the capital of American democracy, a little two-by-four roadside shack had cut a hole in its wall through which to serve Negroes. A colored person could not even come in the door. <laughs> that seemed to me so absurd as to belong in Alice in Wonderland. There was another time in Savannah, Georgia. I wanted to buy a copy of the Sunday New York Times, and I couldn't find it nowhere in town except at the railroad station. Uh, you perhaps know there are colored waiting rooms in Southern Railroad stations. Well, in the colored Jim Crow waiting room, there was no newsstand. So I went outside on the sidewalk and around into the white waiting room, where I bought the Times without incident. But coming out of the station just at the door, a policeman stopped me and said, You can't come in and out of this front door. I know, but the officer, I just bought a paper, and there's no newsstand in the colored waiting room. I don't care nothing about that. You can't come in here. Okay, then... Let me out. You can't go out this door, neither. But, officer, I came in through this door. I don't make no difference. You can't get out. But there's no other way out except through train sheds down the track. That's right. Officer, look, I just came in this way. Well, you can't go out this way. Negroes can't use this door. Well, how do I get out, then? Only way I see is for you to walk the track. So, in order for me to get out of the Savannah station, I have to go through the train sheds. Yep. And follow the railroad tracks to the street crossing. That's right. That's the only way for Negroes to get out of this place. <laughs> I've never experienced anything so absurd before in my life. You know, the seriousness of that cop and the utter stupidity of being at a door but not permitted to go through it kept me laughing all day. You see, I grew up in Kansas, so the absurdity of Southern Jim Crow were new to me at that time and, of course, unbelievably quaint. <laughs> These are the kind of anecdotes that currently amuse Negroes in America. New ones are being born by the minute. Their humor is based on the absurdity of many white Americans giving freedom and democracy such a grandiose play while still selling Negroes strawberry sodas through a hole or threatening to throw black soldiers off a train for objecting to the Jim Crow car. Negroes think democracy's left hand apparently must not know what its right hand is doing. Some white folks do the funniest thing. Personally... I know that not all white Americans practice Jim Crow at home and preach democracy abroad. But, well, what puzzles me about those who do is their utter lack of humor concerning their own absurdities. I've read that Hitler has no sense of humor either. Well, I suppose the greatest killers cannot afford to laugh. Those most, more, most determined to Jim Crow are merely grimly killing democracy in America. Critics praised New World A-Comin' as a powerful and razor-sharp program that aired political and racial issues both in the U.S. military and on the home front. This has been African American History is American History. The episode you've been listening to, Early Radio and Civil Rights, Part 1, was written by Harlan Kearsley. And be sure to tune in for Part 2, coming next week. <laughs> I'm Harlan Kearsley. And to our growing list of subscribers, thank you all for listening and supporting the show. And if you haven't done so, Please like, comment, and subscribe to African American History is American History. Remember, it's free to subscribe. And once you do, you'll be notified as soon as new episodes are posted. Thanks again. And please, stay safe. African American History is American History. Copyright H.C. Kearsley, 2012.
2022.